to be a resource to you today. The last night, I feel like I really tried to do that by just sharing um, a lot of stuff that, that I learned. Um, just the mindset of wrestling, some, some takeaways, how we're organized as a staff, our developmental program here, which some of you, even if you're, you clearly should have been watching less this morning, but if you looked around, you probably saw a lot of younger guys wrestling. You saw a lot of developmental guys we talked about last night wrestling uh, this morning, this afternoon. You'll be able to really watch them compete because we won't have anything going on. We talked about that last night. We talked about regional training centers last night. The positives of having a few, potentially the negatives of having 30, what that would look like. Um, and then there towards the end, I feel like I really just tried to, to answer any questions that you have. Today, the plan is I'm going to teach this 3 by 5 system that, that I've organized in my brain. Before I teach this, please know I didn't come up with this stuff, meaning like last night, it's not like I came up with that up, okay? <laughs> but what I did come up with is this how to organize. I, I would put it in a, in a foundational, concrete structure that I think can be easy to remember for you as coaches, not only easy to remember, but easy to teach other coaches and clearly your athletes, whether they're five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, or whether they're 26 years old. So that's what we're going to go today. I should be done because uh, should be done early, which should open up. If you had some questions last night that you didn't get a chance to ask, I should have. We should be done about 20 minutes early, so you can fire those questions at me this afternoon. And I can do my best job and try to answer. All right. Before I get into the three by five system, I want to talk about stance a little bit. I addressed it last night when we started kind of talking about the low hand fighting uh, technique. I, I want to address stance. And you probably heard me this morning as you're listening to Les, you probably heard me say 50 times, you know, get down in your stance, get, the, get back to your stance, low stance, relax your arms, relax your neck. That's something I'm constantly repeating to the guys. And I was going to address that real quick. When I was growing up, you know, wrestling, if you think about the trophies that we used to win growing up, here's what, here's what the guys remember what they look like in their stance for the trophy. Right? I remember if I go back to Amarillo, Texas, my grandma's house, the trophies I have here is the same, just like this. Clearly, guys, this is the worst possible wrestling stand you can be in. Right? You have no defense for your legs. And I haven't flexed my arms right now to keep them up here, which means my arms are really tight, which means I'm really slow. So let's transition to go from portable stance to gray stance. Number one, I need to just relax my arms, let them drop. Number two, I need to lower my level a little bit more, get lower. And number three, I really believe a staggered stance is a better stance than a square stance. So as you make those changes, arms drop, loose, right? Knees lower a little bit more, so I can take my legs a little better, my arms in front of my legs, all right? And then the next thing I do here is I have loose neck and loose arms as I stagger my feet. You see this? Right. One thing that I was having in mind, one of our new developmental wrestlers, Pat Downing, who just came in a couple days ago, I see he's wrestling this morning, and this, he's getting his stance like this all the time. So first thing, again, he's 18 or I have mind he's 19. I have mind to drop your arms. This doesn't protect your legs. I'm wrestling Derek right here. This is, this is easy to get smart. But if I drop my arms, I drop my head, I lower my legs here, now he goes to get to my leg. It's a lot more difficult. And you may, you may say, duh, or anything. Duh, but even our senior level guys struggle with that. Even our guys are high level struggle with that. So guys six years old struggles with it, and 26 year old struggle. So it may, it may seem something real simple, but I think it's ultra important to increase our chance of winning wrestling matches, your team's chance of winning wrestling matches. Is that constant reminder of having guys always come back to the center, they shake hands, the first thing they do is they drop their arms, loose. They lower their butt a little bit, right? Stay static. I'm not here. Now, here's the deal. I always do it with my arms all the time, because I know if I can shake my arms out like this, they're loose. I'm relaxed. If I'm trying to do this, I'm like, I know I'm tired. So I'm going to always shake my arms out. If Derek were to hit my arm, I'd knock it to the side of any period of time, hit it that way. He should be able to move it that way. It should be that loose. And the thing is, when your arms are loose, you're fast. You're quicker. When my arms are real tight right here, my arms are tight. Oh, come on, let's rest. My arms are tight. When he goes to shoot on me, he's going to shoot. I have, to, I have to relax my arms before I can even defend. And by that time, that's when guys get into your legs. 
So the truth is, some wrestlers are actually quicker than they really, than they really are. But the reason they don't seem to be that quick, and they don't believe they're that quick, is because they're real tight. So a lot of you probably know this already, but one of the, one of the first things I do when these 18 year olds show up in here is teach them how to relax. I just teach them how to chill out a little bit. Yes, sir. Just some coaches don't want to always run up and get so short in the neck. Yeah. Um, I don't believe in your stance you need to shorten your neck because maybe you said why? Let's well, say when I shorten my neck, I'm having a flex. And so when I'm having a flex, I'm tight. I'm tight. So I'm tight. slow. So that the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. Yeah, I just, I think so. I mean, I think when I'm clearing a front headlock, right here, I need to shorten my neck. I need to shorten my neck when I'm doing that. When I'm wrestling, I don't need to shorten my neck. Because right now, I'm having to actually do like a, you know, pull my, my shoulders up to my neck just to shorten. I'm having to flex. And having to flex, that means I'm tight. I need to relax. Guys, when my neck is relaxed, and my arms are relaxed, my hips are relaxed, I'm fat so much faster. Because then when Derek, I'm so much better, he goes to the tanning area, he goes ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, I'm able to move. I'm able to load my up. I'm able to down. I'm able to keep ahead of But if I'm real tight, tight shoulders, tight hands, he goes to the tanning area. That's why guys sometimes have horrible defense. Because they're so tight. What am I going to defend the snap down from there? If a guy snaps me straight, I attack at the same time. So I'm loose right here. If he wants to snap me straight, I mean, that's how I defend the snap down right there. Because I attack. <coughs> if he's really heavy on my head right here, pulling on it, yes, I can attack. Or as he pulls on it right here, all I'm going to do is relax my neck, go with it a little bit, just start with my feet. Instead of raising this machine, I'm just going to go on my level, double tap, circle my feet. Instead of, instead of what a lot of guys do, if you pull them ahead, they're like, ah, ah. that's when guys attack their leg. So when I have to finish snapping, he's snapping me straight, I'll try to time attack. That's what we do, it's called a stance maintenance drill, where Derek's getting the stance. I'm the guy helping him maintain his stance, I may just be pulling on him. And let this time and experience how I pull on it. He attacks. Um, I want to go into how we clear ties later, towards the end. But back to the stance part, the overarching truth there loose neck, loose arms. Drop your arms, lower your butt a bit more. The more loose you are, the quicker you are. If you want to watch the world championships, watch some of the guys. We're talking about Kudakov, 60 kilo, two time. Three times, he's been a world champion. Well, in 2009, 2010, 2011, so you can make an argument, it's pretty good. Three times defending world champion. Watch him wrestle. He'll start out, and you see him do this, he just lose. He just, he just lose. He just lose. He's not. That's not how he wrestles. He's loose. And because he's so loose, he's quick, he's really explosive. And you go shoot on him, he's really quick to go into his feet, sorry, he's already legs. So I just want to make that point about stance. Because I think it's a, it's a great point to make. And clearly, if our wrestlers don't have great stance, nothing else works very well. Their offense and defense have great stance. What we do to start practice almost every day. I did it yesterday with the guys. The guys that are here, as we'll take turns, I'll remind the guys to start loose, warming up. He gets in a good stance. I'm going to get stance and touch heads first, maybe. And maybe we do a little low finger fighting, and right? then we just take turns. He shoots on me, I level change, get my head in the way. I shoot on him, he level change, circles, gets his head in the way. He shoots on me, I level change, get my head in the way. And we just take turns. And that programs the guys, muscle memory, anytime a guy lowers a level to attack, I lower my level to get my head in the way. I lower my level to get my head in the way. We're going to talk about defense later. But before we get there, I just want to make sure I make that really clear about those stance. Any questions on that, on the stance, before we move on? Being loose, making contact? Any questions at all? Okay, good. So, now, 3 by 5 system is three sets of five things. Five, five, and five, right? Three sets of five. The first set of five things I told you guys last night, um, 
clearly going to repeat it today. But the first set of five are just what I call the five keys to wrestling. And these things I'm going to share with you today over the next you know, 45 minutes to an hour are what I consider the concrete, the foundation that I'm for my wrestling house, right? for my palestra that I'm building for myself. All right? Th these things are concrete that whether you want to be Shoot low singles, duck hunters, double legs, high crotches, dig under hooks, whatever you want to do, these are the things I think are most important that you can always come back to. These are the things you can take a, a group of six, seven, eight, nineteen year olds, pour this foundation for them, and build them up for the rest of their lives. And when if they show up to me here when they're 19, 20, 21 years old, if they came into the room and said, Coach, I know it's important for me to my head up, my back straight, my hips in, off my knees, and press her, they're like, awesome. Who taught you that? But my, my youth coach did back home when I was seven. I'm like, really? And you had a great coach, right? That's what it would be. So this is really simple, but I want to spend about 10, 20 seconds, maybe a little longer on each one explaining. All right, guys, the first key to wrestling, people always say, they'll say, Graham, what do you think the most important part of wrestling? I said, how do you head that? And again, you can be like, duh, well, watch some more senior level guys shoot. They still shoot their head at. Duh, they do. A lot of little kids in high school feel young and included. But the reason, guys, we want our head up when we're attacking, number one, the most important thing is so we can see what we're doing. Uh, I use the example of the little kids, which makes sense to the high school kids, too. So I say, you know, what happens if I'm driving and I look down the floorboard for 30 seconds? Folks are like, you're going to crash. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to crash. Same thing with us. If I was there to look down the mat, take shots looking down the mat, I'm not looking at the road in front of me, the path in front of me that I want to go now. If I'm not looking at that path, then I'm going to crash. It's not going to work out very well. So guys, you want your head up number one so you can see where you're going. That's one of the most important reasons. Because as we know where our head goes, our body goes, correct? But it's all that's our best. So my head up. The second, the second key to wrestling guys is having our back straight. The reason I want my back straight, especially when I'm attacking the shots, is because when I'm back straight, I'm strong. I mean you think about you think about like the weight room, we go in there, I don't do a lot of pull downs like this. Or K1 rolls like this. That would be really goofy if you walked in there and saw me doing that. But if you walked in there and saw me doing K1 rolls like this, you'd be like, man, that guy's going to work at it. Right? With some left pull downs like this, you see that's correct because my back is straight. If my back is straight, I'm strong. If my back is bent over like this, I'm trying to finish shots like this. If my back's bent, I'm weak. And by the way, clearly they're connected. When my back starts bending over, my head starts going back. Straighten my back here, let's see, my head starts going up. So they're clearly very connected. So number one set up, number two is back straight. The third key to wrestling guys is having our hips set. The way I define our hips, another word for it is our trunk. There's a term to you nowadays about the street conditioning, you know, this is your trunk. Clearly the strongest part of the tree is the trunk, not the limbs. I define trunk, hips, about right here above my knees, getting right here below my pecs. This area, this is my trunk. Also known as your core. Alright, my hips, my trunk, my core. This is the strongest part of my body. If you would ask most 18-year-olds uh, what the strongest part of their body is, they may say they'll be a pinch or their biceps or something goofy. They just won't say that. But clearly, your biceps are the strongest part of your body. It's this area right here. So what that means is that if this is the strongest part of your body, it makes no sense to have it out. If I take a shot on there, and I crotch, Makes no sense. This is the strongest part of my body. If I'm trying to finish this shot to a double leg like this. Head down, back bend, this side, which you'll see this a lot. I'm not even using the most strong, powerful part of my body. You guys that are involved high school wrestlers, you've probably done hand cleans, power cleans, those type of things, running boys from here, head down, back bend, hips out to head up, back straight, right? Hips in. So you're pretty much going from hand clean, you're going from that position to wrestling to good position. And that's what we're doing, that's what we're learning how to get those hips, we learn how to explore, we learn how to use the core and trunk to score points in wrestling. It's not just to be great power runners. We want to be able to make sure that transitions into, if I'm going to go hand clean right here, head up, back straight, hips in, I want that to make sure it transfers into an onion slam. Right? Make sure that transfers and think about doing a hand clean right now. Make sure that transfers into here. Right? We want that to connect. Doesn't make sense to have our guys doing hand cleans in there, they don't understand why they're doing it. 
We're doing them so that connects to a wrestling specific exercise. All right? So we've got to have the hips in. Head up, back straight, hips in. Fourth key to wrestling. I'm speeding through these because you guys are smart enough to get them. Fourth key to wrestling is staying off my knees. I get to this double leg, I can't just expect to knock you guys down on my knees. Some of you may be like, hey, seen that before back home. Me too. Guys, we're on our knees. We're not very fast. We're not very explosive, clearly. It's a goofy example, but we don't do squats on our knees. We really build up our strength. We don't do that. We don't wear wrestling shoes on our knees, right? For grip. All that stuff, we wear shoes. Wrestling shoes on our feet for grip, so we can drop off of them. We do squats to strengthen our legs on our feet here. So I don't want to stay on my knees. I'm going to hit my knee for a moment. I don't come up to my feet as much as possible. Specifically in freestyle. Really in freestyle. Why, is it, why would you say it's even more important to come to our feet in freestyle? Drive them off the mat, right? Drive them off the mat. Push them off the mat. That's the great thing about freestyle. I'm wrestling there. I don't have to. I don't have to finish the single leg right here. I don't have to finish it. Point. I ain't got to finish it. But that's a little hard to do if I go. It's real hard to do on my knees. Go tough. Tough to get that point. But if I drop up, right, to my feet, then it's a higher chance to win that point. So head up, back straight, hips in, off your knees. You got the fifth key to wrestling, I consider pressure. And pressure means when I hit a double leg, when I hit a double leg, I don't just go. How many points I score for that? Right? See it. So pressure means when I hit a guy, ooh, try to leg up, hit it. Pressure, 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 pressure. So I get my point. And that's very important for yourself too. Real important. An example I use a lot for the kids, because I know a lot of you guys work with young wrestlers. Example I use a lot for pressure because a lot of them you know, love football and maybe have played it. Is that we've done that cross the bow tackle drill. Where Derek's going right here, and where it's happening, if I just go like that. In a football game, my high school football coach, if I would have done that, would have walked up to me, slapped me upside the head, slapped my shoulder pads, dropped by the F bomb 50 times at me, and told me where a pathetic tackle was. But, you know, guys are in here, and I go here, right? Then my coach would have came up, still hit me upside the head and shoulder pads, but he'd said, oh, that was awesome. Right? <laughs> still would have hit me, but it would have been facing me instead of cursing. So the key to that was to keep my feet moving, right? Pressure. So pressure comes from your feet. Here's the best way to remember this. is just stand straight up. First key to wrestling is head up. Second key to rest is back straight. Third key to rest is hips in. Fourth key to rest is staying off your knees. Fifth key to rest is pressure. You see that? Just head to toe. That's, that's great wrestling right there. And look at this. You, right now you're probably thinking all offense. Derek shoots on me. Okay, step. Okay. Oh, yeah, Is that going to be Where's my head at? Where's my back at? Where's my hips at? Where's my knees at? I think you guys were coming up for headlocks this morning. Did, did less have his head down, back, neck, dips out on his knee. Now. Right? He had good head up, back, straight, so dips out. Now here's the, here's the great thing. How would you, um, go ahead and raise your hand on this because I'm going to see what you guys think. This is work that's thrown out all the time in wrestling. So I'm, I'm going to throw it out at you, and I want somebody to raise your hand and tell me how you would define it. The word is position. Yeah. Head up, back straight. <laughs> we said it a little different. Doubles in, hips in, grab the press. Correct. And here's the thing, guys. You don't have to use the same words as me. I use it that way. You can use whatever words you want. As long as you're consistent with your hand wrestling. You don't have to use the same words as me. But I think as long as I understand hips in, as long as I understand head up, those important things, and he's right on. The way I define position are those things. That's great position. <clears throat> This is 
good position. This is bad position. See? Good position, bad position. So when it's not position, it's all centered around those five. Then back to your hips and upper knees, pressure. That's position. And that would get thrown around all the time. Hey, if you'd have gotten better position, you'd have finished that. But you know what I found? If there was a group of 15, 16 year olds right here, and I asked them that same question, in general, there might have been really you know, a kid that's coached really well, they like, oh, maybe he does. But I've done humbly, I've done hundreds and hundreds of clinics across the country, when I ask wrestlers in prime position, it's a ghost. Fair enough. But I'll say, how many times your coach said that? But he says it all the time. But you know what it means? So guys, I'll make a point there. Make sure when you say position, you get in good position, you're in bad position, make sure that your wrestler knows what that is. Does that make sense? Make sure they understand. Because position can seem like a fancy word, but as long as you define it and connect it to the truth, uh, position is having your body in the right place for the sport of wrestling. Right? Having your body in the correct place. That's great position. Having your body in the wrong place, that position. Do you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, well, how do you incorporate, do you also incorporate the sense of mad awareness in there? Which to me is kind of, it's kind of more of a philosophical piece, but it, it coordinates it's not only what you're doing with the body, but where you are in terms of the for sure. wrestling space. For sure. And I would say, you know, freestyle, because you have to be legalistic about it, but, you know, if I'm wrestling Derek and he's right here, he's not in a good position in freestyle, right? He's not in a good position on the mat. His body's not in the right place. Because all it takes is just a good level change. That's a point. So based on where he's at on the mat awareness, he would be in bad position. But, but I will say, though, as you know this, of working with 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds, you can't make position about 42 different things. Because then they don't get it. It's too much almost. So that's why I'm really passionate about making sure they understand clear. Well, but you're exactly right. If you're on the head man, is that in a bad position for sure? Those type of things, uh, standing straight up, even on the heads up, back straight, hips in, I'm off my knees, this is bad position. <laughs> so that's not, I'm not good place with my body based on the stance I said earlier. So that can continue to be a bigger thing for sure. But they need to make sure they understand the head up after it gets in all the pressure. Any questions about those? Five things? And those things, I'll just, by the way, get down. All I do is freestyle wrestling guys, but some of you guys play that are uh, coach collegiate wrestling, also knows folks that also knows class, also knows amateur, right? <laughs> Okay, so when I ride a guy right here, when I go to break him down, right here and I'm riding him, I'm trying to break him down right here, look where my head's at, up, back straight, gets him off my knees, grab his arm, grab his See? I'm not head down, back, big hips out. So, right, come up on the bottom. Bottom headset, top headset, I slow that in him, he pushes on me, head up, back straight, gets him off my knees. So I'm not just talking freestyle. I'm talking neutral. I'm talking defense. We got shoots on me. Riding guys on top and getting out from the bottom. He comes to the most polls that Jeff. So what drills do you use to enforce that? The drills, probably the best drill that we do to reinforce that is that's called the lead pound drill. Which is probably one of the most rigorous drills to do. Most kids don't like it. <laughs> but that's how most of the great drills are, right? When I get here, he goes to stalls on me. I've got to finish from here. My head down, back hand hips out. So I work on reinforcing this. I explode. I'll keep keeping it so we keep it in Right? Just continue to go from bad position to good position. We do these drills in here every Thursday morning. We do wrestling specific lifts. I start out having guys shoot in on single legs. He gives me 40% resistance. And I drive them up out of bounds. The next one I make him give me 70% resistance. So this is a freestyle drill. As I'm dropping out, he makes me more weight. Maybe he cuts me off the corner, makes it harder for me. And the last one we do is I put guys all the way down here to small. You know, And I make them from here. 
as I get older, and ask um, God, Joe Williams, it doesn't really work very well. I tried to shoot on it, didn't work. I have to learn how to evolve a penetration step to become quicker, more explosive. The problem with this thing right here for me, again, for me, the problem with it is when I step right here, right now, the only place for my body to go is down. I'm not going to step and go and do else home is fine squirrel. I'm not going to do that. All right? When I step here, I step now, the only place for my body to go is down. Now, at this moment, if a guy has a good squirrel and he squirrels real hard, this is a lot of guys get stuck right there. That moment. What I call landing the plane. They land the plane. And I feel like it was really hard for me to score when I landed the plane. So the opposite of that is I figured out that I need to have a way to take off. You know, and I always tell the little kids, I don't want to land the plane. I don't want to come, I don't want to come back on the trip, right? I want to go on the trip. I want to take off. And they're like, yeah, yeah, right? So I'm going to take off. I'm going to shoot up to my home. So you say, okay, great. Randy, what does that look like? So, try to raise your hand and tell me what's the very first thing you do besides the setup. What's the very first thing you do before you finish it? Change the Huh? Belt change. Belt change. Now, side step, and that's not bad. I'll say what I do sometimes. I'll take maybe at the little back step. If you see Kel do a lot, he'll do this a lot. He'll do that a lot when he's faking on guys. Um, I do that a lot when I'm faking. So, it's not necessarily a side step, it's more like a little back step, you know? I call it over slow, 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 slow. Alright? But before I do that though, two levels. So it looks like this. You go a little slow. Okay? See that shot's open watch. Little back step, little back step. Here. Now I want to again have it trying to touch my hands in that, because I know I'm getting a little close to Matt and good luck. Now I'm ready to take off. See that? So the first thing I always do is our penetrates on level change. Tell me why it's important. I mean, why is it important to level change before you shoot? Somebody tell me, why is it important to level change before you shoot? Gets you closer to the zero. Gets you closer, for sure. Increase the opening. You're right, but that's not what I'm looking for you. So I shoot up. Of course, it keeps what? In place. Our position, right? Look at this. What if I don't level change? What if I'm like, ah, I love changes for whistles, right? I don't want to level change at all. So I want that leg. The only way I can get it, guys, I want to level change to go. See that? So I'll level change. Yeah, I can get closer. I'll level change the same position. I'll level change here so I can, so I can keep my head in my back shoulder hips in. That's why I'll level change. So I don't level change, I have to do this. So the first thing I always do is a level change, so I can change my position the first five keys of wrestling. I'm going to keep that concrete in place. See that strapping? That's why I level change. Another reason I level change is because I want to create some coil, some power in my legs. I don't want to say coil, I'm talking about like a rattlesnake, right? If the snake is straight, it's not really going to strike very far. Don't, be, don't fear getting to 10 feet away from straight. Right? But if that thing does like this, then be scared. Same thing with our legs. The reason I love change is I want to pull you. See my legs? Pull you. Now I have power. So that's the number one. First thing you do in penetration is level change. Two, maintain position and create power. Any questions on that so far? But the next thing is, the next part of this is going to be what I just call a knee pound. You can call it whatever you want. I call it a knee pound because what ends up happening is when I explode right here, my knee ends up pounding the mat. It works well for me because I know it's a step. My knee was going to step in any ways. So I'm going to go about 10%. I'm going to go real slow this first time. All right? Level change. Watch my knee pounds. Okay. That allows me to take off right there. That allows me to create some power. That uses the coil on my legs and the power I created to make a difference when I hit it. Now here's the deal. I don't know where my knee's going to land. It's going to land somewhere deep in there. It's okay. I don't have to measure it out. But here's what's really, really important about this, is that I have to make sure my shoulder hits before my knee hits there. Let me show you. If my knee hits, all this power's created. That's what a lot of kids do. 
they fall over, and then they want to try to jump up itself. You're going to take advantage of the power. So when I explode from this knee pound, the second piece of it, I want to make sure my shoulder hits. I'm going to go easy. I want to make sure my shoulder hits. See that? Pull my knee hits. That's why I'm using this power. I'm using this foot fully. I mean, I'm shooting up to 45 to 80, like a plane take off. Okay, for those of you who work at 6, 7, 8, 19 foot, right? You know, then I have to learn 45 to 80 to a freshman high school. Six-year-olds, they know what they're playing, it looks like a state ball. So I level change, and I shoot up at that angle at 45. Put my shoulder, that's it, 40 meters. Any questions on that so far? That's usually something that um, causes some friction. There's clearly, like I said, different points of view. People like to take big steps and come back up. Again, it just, it just didn't work on no explosive people. You couldn't get to go when like that. I had to adapt, I had to change. So this is what this looks like. Lower your level knee count. Now it's not this I'm gonna go up 40%. 40%. <laughs> so this is what this looks like. I do a drill called the explosion drill, which I think for your high schoolers and little kids, this is how you get this. The explosion drill, I'll tell you when I'm gonna go. So you're ready. The explosion drill is I'm gonna make sure I walk up and close enough to my opponent, but I'm gonna be close enough. If I can't touch him, I always tell my wrestler, don't shoot. If, if, I, if I can't come near, close to touching him, for the most part, I'm too far out in general. Right? But if I'm wrestling here and I can touch him, that's why I don't wrestle a lot, I always do this. I'm wrestling, I go. And number one, it makes him mad. Because he wants to reach for me, which I wanted to reach for him too. Right? So if I were to punch him, I knew I was close enough. I knew I was close enough. If I can punch him, I'm close enough. So part of the drill is, I know I can touch him, I'm close enough. That's the first thing. Then what I do from there, once I'm close enough, all I'm going to do is have a level change, hands to the mat, tight, okay, ready? Level change, now I'm going to work on my, my kids just exploding up into level change. See? Now here's the deal. I think you would agree that I have a better chance to get a double leg if I hit a guy like that than if I just do this. Shoot. That's what I found in my wrestling. There, there'd be people over here that say, Brandon, not everybody can do that. And I'd be like, okay, fine, I understand. I can't, you know, <laughs> I can't, uh, I can't shoot little singles like John Smith. I mean, my ankle picks aren't as dangerous as Kelly's, because his arm is eight inches long, right? There's different styles of different things that people do, but for me teaching you this today, this is just a different way to think about it. <laughs> okay? Level change, knee count. Shooting up at a 45 degree, and putting that shoulder in his abdomen. The way I fine tune this for wrestlers is if you're a right leg lead, you want your right shoulder to like an arrow, and here's the bullseye. So when I go, when I go, I put an arrow in the bullseye. If you're a left leg lead, your left shoulder, I put an arrow in the bullseye. See that? That kind of keeps them on that trajectory on that path. So level change and knee pad. Any questions at all? Yes, sir. How do you do that by yourself? How do you do that by yourself? How do I do it by myself? How do you do it by yourself? Well, I don't think you can do it by yourself, but it's a great thing just to have to get a partner in front of them. I mean, I could, I have guys like, uh, here, I can use you. <coughs> this is what I do. So, I'm like, okay, you're sitting here. Your turn. In your seats. Okay, can you touch them? Can you get close enough? Okay, get them close enough. Lower your level. Okay, from right here, now watch. Here's what I do. This is a bouncing a little bit. Get your legs and hips loose. Bounce. Bounce. Your legs loose. Feel that? Count three. You want to take the arrow and the bullseye. Ready? One, two, three. Boom! All right? And you lift them up. When you lift them up, you help them understand that, that angle of things. You help them understand that trajectory. Because when they go do it on their own, they'll go. They what? So you start lifting them up so they feel that. And then when you do that with, with kids, this guy knocks them off the speed and lands on his back. He's like, oh. it's like, okay, your turn. I'm going to knock your breath out. Come here. Your turn. And you let him do it to his buddy. Then it's kind of like, man, I'm a lot more powerful than I thought. It's not because you got stronger in the last 30 seconds. It's because you changed your technique. You start shooting up instead of shooting down. So I do it with partners first and understand it. And then after they kind of get that down, I mean, you can do it on your own. You're just kind of doing stance and motion every time. Footwork down, you can do it on your own. And then, by the way, with my guys, 
Because you start getting guys that are real powerful, and it's not really, you know, fun to do. So much, I know you guys all, all have these, it's okay. You have one of them, or two of them, that's great. Because, truth is, Derek doesn't want me to do that to him 20 times in a row, it's not fun. But, he doesn't mind this, right? He's not going to work on next time, close up your level chain. Level chain. Right? And then I can work on that same shot, that explosion, he doesn't mind this. I think that's cool, I'd much rather you get the dummy. Then me. So using dummies to work on your uh, explosion is a great option to have. Sir. Uh, maybe into this, but taking it through to a finish. Uh, yeah. Are you locking your hands? You just, just, I mean, are you blasting them off their feet so it doesn't really matter as much? So we'll get there. We'll get there. If I forget, ask me again. So now, there's five steps to this, right? We're only down two. But I said, if you don't get these two, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So, really easy. Level chain. Bam! Full explosion there, right? Now, third step, trail leg. Guys, my trail leg, call my trail leg because it's just the trail's behind, right? Okay? It's trailing behind. So, I bring my trail leg up. Here's a problem a lot of wrestlers have. When they bring the trail leg up, they bring it up like this. What's the problem with this? It's straight. Right now. It's straight. I have no power, right? I don't do squats like this. I'm going to bring it up like this, and I, I overemphasize my teeth. So they know. I put my full foot in the mat. Someone want to do this too. Like, when do squats like that either? Get, use your whole leg strength right here. Make that 90 degree angle. Like you're in a squat. Right? Like I'm doing a squat. Put your leg up there. So number three, show up. Try leg up. What happens, number three and number four happen at the same time. Kind of like number one and number two kind of happen at the same time. Three and four is trail leg up. Number four is just what I call a pivot. Watch how my knee comes up. Watch the side. I just pivot about six inches towards my trail leg. At that moment, I'm already taking all that pressure off, all that power to sit off. You guys, the way I think of my, my pivot, also called the swisher, also called the windshield wiper. Depends on where you're going. But I just call it a pivot because it's short. All right, pivot, the way I think about this pivot foot, I think about it like an example I use like a rudder on a boat. You can tell on, you know, hey, what does a rudder do? Turns the boat. What happens if the rudder is turned one inch, the boat will go around the surface. Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit of turn, the boat will turn. A big, huge carnival cruise line will turn. If you move it just a little bit, it'll turn. So right here, it doesn't have to be like, <sighs> then I'll lose the double, right? Overemphasize the angle. I lose the double. So I'm just going to keep my trail leg up. I'm just going to pivot just about six inches right here. Take that pressure off. And notice how my pivot, see how my toes in the mat? See that? I'm not like this because I can't push off the top of my shoe. The top of my shoe doesn't have rubber on it. The bottom of it. I don't walk on the tops of my feet. I walk on the bottom. So trail leg up, pivot. Trail leg up, pivot. <clears throat> Your question. What I say to the kids is that this is, again, remember this is just trunk. What's the strongest part of the tree? Trunk, right? So I don't want to chop down the trunk. I want to chop down the limbs. I want to make my hands like axes. Not the trunk, be here. So when I attack this double, boom, my elbows are in. They're not like this. They're in tight, so I don't get underhooked by shooting like this, right? My hands are in tight, close to his knees, and then I'm like axes, right here on the back of his kneecaps, and watch out, my elbows in, tight. Axis elbows in. So trail leg up, pivot, axis elbows in. For right now, he's already starting to buckle a little bit. See this? The fine tuning of the pivot, trail leg up, pivot, what I do right here is I call it flex. That's where I overemphasize. Head up back, straight hips in. See that? Because if I don't overemphasize, I'm trying to hear. My head can get down, my back can get down, my hips get down. But if I go trail leg up, pivot, flex! So kind of move away from me. This is what this looks like. Tell those kids, I'll say, it's kind of like when you're downstairs in your room and you have your shirt off and you're standing in the mirror and you flex. Don't act like you've never done it before, you might have. Right? That's basically what we're doing here. And look, push off now. Yeah. Shall we? Here. 
that affects our hip sense. Well, we're the first thing to talk about today, right? So, trail leg up pivot, go together. Trail leg up pivot. Trail leg up pivot. Flex. Hands are axes on the knees, on the limbs. Now, from here, guys, this is easy to finish. I want to talk about the finish. The finish from here is easy. So just step up. Presser, 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 we're talking about. Before you get there, I want to come back to the pivot. Why is the pivot so important? What's an angle? Huh? An angle's getting my head around? Yeah, I know what you mean right here. Look at it. all the time, you guys. He's taking his weight, right in, going that way. An angle's taking his weight, putting it that way? Yeah. True. Getting behind your opponents. Huh? Getting behind your opponents. That's getting an angle. Angles. You're beating all this. You know, this is when you switch it. Yeah. It's all good. It's true. So let's really make it real quick. So, T, did you say? Did you say T? Gotcha. I don't know, you cheated because you heard me T. So, so guys getting an angle, right? I know angle is 45 degrees, I'm adding an angle, this type of stuff. I, I put T in, perpendicular, I had all that stuff, creating that 90 degree angle. So, when I shoot on there, I shoot it in with the letter I. I'm on this path. So getting an angle is changing the direction of something you said and driving at this T angle, creating this 90 degree angle, perpendicular angle, and driving across. The reason why that's so really important is my feet, I know they're kind of stubby, a little nine and a half, but my feet are shaped like the letter I. Right? Shaped like this. But if you pivot, and it comes down to the T, guys, my feet aren't shaped like this. So you go to drive me this way. That's why it's hard for me to stand on my feet. That's why I want to create angles. Because it knocks people out of balance because the feet don't go that way. Their feet are not angled, angled that direction. Does that make sense? The things you guys were saying were right, but I want you to really understand why we get angles. We get angles because a guy, he, he can't defend at that angle. At that T angle. He's not the speed I'm mentioning at the end of that. I mean, Derek's pretty good. You know, if I hit him right here, he's just driving. See that? You guys probably seen that a lot of times, right? You guys hit shots and they just drive. And again, freestyle's great. But in collegiate, if I drive him out of balance, how many points are I get? Zero. So I'd say the angle and golf style I like is probably make strong arguments more important than freestyle. Because I got finished. I got finished. Push him out of the did it. I was finished. On the back. I said that I controlled. So you can make a strong argument that angles are more important than both sides, which is classic amateur. Okay? The best example of an angle that I've seen outside of the sport of wrestling, always uh, use this on new clinics, are uh, our bullfighters. The last time I watched a bullfighter, I really focused in on his feet. And what's really interesting is see him standing kind of like this. And I look at his feet and say, man, that's how I see him. I mean, he's not standing, he's not wrestling stance, he's standing up. So he's doing like this. So go real slow. There it is, we'll go real slow. But the feet comes, watch my foot. Straight like that. Okay. Well, it comes again, he's like, straight like that. Did it. I'm like, that's what I do. Why not finish shots? You know what the Matador is creating? He's creating a T angle. And then down the road, the only way this Matador is going to be able to beat 130 pound Matador is going to be able to beat a 1200 pound bull is he keeps doing this. Spear, okay? So like he catches his body, throws the spear. He's going to come over here and the bull comes, right? So like a pivot. And 10 spears later, the bull's up, falls down. How does a little gal attack beat a bull? Angles. Real simple. And the guys that end up getting hit are the guys that get so kind of risky that they'll start doing this. And then they'll get really, really close and maybe they're just staying when they catch it. Because they, they don't create a good enough. You guys understand that example? Um, this is a goofy one that I wish took place, but it doesn't. I think about, I was up in uh, Estes Park, Colorado not so long ago, and there's some big horn sheep up there. I got to watch them do this. Right? They're raising up, they're both on the letter I mean. I just thought, what if one of those big one sheep 
understood angles. Right? This guy raised up, he raised up, and said, back, trail, leg up, pivot, ah! Right on the side of the other big one she said, right? He would have all the chicks, he'd be like the master big one she loved him king, right? Because he'd never lose. Because he'd be, you know, just T-boning -t -t guys to the side because they understand angles. But they don't understand angles, and they just sit there and do this all. By the way, my presser is just kind of tied in that off the start shake in. Alright? Once you start creating angles, different story. You won't be that side of it. Alright? Guys, any questions about the angles? I want to make sure I can hammer that nail down. Cool. Level change. Knee count. Trail again, number three. Did it. I'm just going to step up and across. Remember, head up back straight, hips and off my knees. Pressure, off my knees, pressure. Off my knees, and step up. I'm just stepping up towards his toe. And the fifth key to us is pressure, pressure, pressure. Look at my hands on the back of his kneecaps. Not good, guys. It's not a, oh, it's not a, it's not a double butt sheet. And he's like, hey, here. Pressure, pressure, pressure. The reason why I like to grab here, too, is because you're finishing especially in collegiate. If I have my hands locked on his knees, it's hard to turn. But if I spread and I lay in right here, look, I can, I can jump my knees in. Then I can come in and turn. That's why I prefer doing this. First. Some guys aren't big turn, turn guys, that's fine. I'm talking about going up, like, forearms just below the butt. And like on a double? Yeah, shoot up. Like on a double right here? Land right here? here and flex it. Like maybe right here? Yeah. And then step yeah, up. I think for me, I guess my arms feel like right now they're so short, this would be really hard to come all the way around and grab this. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this is really easy. And by the way, here's his trunk. This doesn't do as much as... When I start messing with his kneecaps, his angle's on his knee, he buckles a lot easier when I squeeze on his butt. Is that horrible? No, I'm going to say it's horrible. I mean, if I saw somebody in a, in a tournament go, I'd be like, sweet! You know? I mean, that's great if you can do that. <clears throat> but again, personal thing, I feel really confident buckling guys' knees, running down, stepping in, straight turn. <clears throat> so the last part is to step up and across. Here, run them down. Here's the cool thing about this. Run them away from me. Show like a pivot. Now, I've never done this in wrestling. But let's just say, for example, just for a, another example of why this is good position in the right place, right? What, if, what do I look like if I do this? Sprint. What do I look like? Sprint. A sprinter. A sprinter. Someone who wants to run the fastest time possible in 100 meter dash, and that's how they start. Staggered legs, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just here. Pretty close, pretty close. See that? Pretty close. I'm getting my feet set like a sprinter so I can sprint at that team as fast as I can. So, level change, knee count, try to pivot, step up and across at the team angle. Talk to my angles for a few minutes. Any questions on that penetration step? Yes, sir. I'll, te I'll teach my guys a little bit like penetration And I'll be interested to see how uh, the closest I can think of is if I know these little snatch. Especially with the heavier weights, how does that? Heavier weights? Great question. You don't always have to touch your knee. You do have to touch your knee. So I don't have to touch my knee, maybe. Right? I didn't touch my knee. You can be a pretty good headway, so do that. Single, a bone on top, single. Right? Level change. That's the level change. So shot up to my shoulder. That shoulder right here, that pulls out. So I'll change the shot up. A single leg buddy, I try to like do the same way in the same way. No, that's not going to single. But doubles and high crosses I do. Doubles, reach for me. Doubles and high crosses I do. Singles, I don't need to pivot so much. But great question. Do you have to hit your knee on a pin straight step? No. But you have to launch it. And you have to have a better back straight in the same. And you have to bring your shoulder up. You have to keep pressure. 
So these things can be tweaked a little bit, but the big core of it doesn't change. Bigger guys don't have this. Great question. No, I want to step up almost in the same way I would step when I walk. So I think I don't want to be like this is a good balance. So when I step, and now from here, this is just happy feet. I would say the shorter equipment, more explosive out there, the better. The more big, long steps you take, the less tired you get. It's like out of blocks and somebody's screaming, right? They don't go, they don't go like that, right? They go like this. Right? Same type of premise. I want to take those real quick, fast steps up. Okay? So I can sprint, blow out of blocks from you. Good question. Another question. Instead of your shoulder, do you ever leave with the head? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Leading with the head, though, the whole like pivot. Travel across is not going to be as important anymore, correct? I'm just going to blast them. Yeah, we go easy here. Burble says that sometimes. He'll just shoot through the center center. But he doesn't just shoot through this, he doesn't go. He hits, run. Quick feet, run, 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 run. Spirit up. And I'd say that's what's important we have our kind of like our our core foundation. And here's what's cool about wrestling, is you can end up building your house with brick, or stone, or stucco, or siding, whatever you want, right? I want to be more of a spear double, than a stone. I want to be more of a, you know, cut the angle double, nice brick, right? It just depends on how you want to build your particular technique that fits into, again, the, the foundation of the penetration step and head up back straight here, so. I don't hit the guy with this either. I still want to hit him on my forehead, on my back straight, because that's what bows him over. Not this. <coughs> Any other questions on penetration set? So here's the, you know, I want you to realize something, is that I just taught you guys a double leg, but that's not what's in the plan. You guys see that? He said I'm teaching a three by five system I did. I just happened to show you a double leg. I taught me the double leg, but it was all based on position and traits. Because I'm a really big believer, if you know how to shoot the double leg really well, that means you know how to do this stuff well. Shooting high cross and single leg and all those other things is actually it's, it's really easy to teach kids. If you shoot a good, hard, basic double, it's really easy to get them to switch over to, okay, go. So instead of going both legs, I just, I just shoot. So you said double change, yep. Just like your double, knee hop, yep. But instead of going here, just go high cross. Trail leg up again, coach? Yep. Pivot, coach? Yep. Now go. Oh, I know how to do that. He's teaching them other moves when they understand position, penetration. There's no other reason. Don't go and pick it up a lot faster. If you can understand position and penetration, a lot of other areas are less going to be understood. Any questions on those two? Position and penetration. First two sets of five. Coming in on time, doing good. Okay. Last set of five, our five lines of defense. We've already started kind of uh, talking about these a little bit. <clears throat> Again, sit down, we'll start very first line of defense. I mean, I would, I would say they don't, my hands don't have to be there. If you're, if you're really comfortable, a guy really comfortable, come out here and touch the forehead to forehead, I'm all fine. Or let's do that, I'm not. I'd rather, I'd rather do that than make the mistake of coming up here and going. Like this and get taken down. I would rather him start on set first and he likes that better. But some wrestlers, some wrestlers like to come out, right? Maybe you like, like to come out thumb block first, thumb block, then head, or a little hand fight, then head, right? Some guys like to come here and maybe follow top, then head. But notice, have I reached with both hands at the same time yet? If I'm going to thumb block up here, then I'm going to go out here. Wow. Yeah. Every single time, I had one hand down and my head was always in place. You guys understand that? <sighs> Real quick on the hands, just to make you break through the options. One option is finger fight first. Another option is thumb block. One thing I say about thumb block, key term is thumb. Guys, if I just put my hands on Derek's back, 
It's like this, any level changes, to me it would put my hand. What a total waste of time. If I put my thumb down towards the mat, then when he goes to the tap right now, I feel him coming. And definitely not put the head in place. And right here, it's really hard. I'm going to try to touch my leg. See that? Thumb down, I can feel him coming. So my thumb up, so I'm going to shoot that right there. That's my hands in my first line. Defense. Any questions on hands? Main contact? Second line of defense is my head. Your head's only line of defense is if it's the same height as your opponent or leaning a little lower. You may have some hostile wrestlers, but it's okay to get stance. My head will never be a line of defense. If my head's higher than that. my head's the same height as his. And anytime he goes to attack, I keep my head the same height as his. It's really hard for me to get smaller. I think my head and my head like a wall. The great wall. Okay. I'm just defending, keeping people out. A wall is there to protect, right? Keep people from trespassing. No trespassing. We're going to talk about something else that's connected to that. Here in a second. But the wall is there to keep people out, correct? Especially in the old days, why they build walls? Protect their team, protect people, keep people out. Safety, safety, right? I don't want people to get smaller. So my head's like a wall. The only way it can be like a wall is if I have the head same height as his head or lower. You can do some great head fighting drills there with Coach Derek Serpent since I get his teeth. I can square back up with him. I can go down five to this teeth here. I did this the other day in El Paso with these kids. And this one kid's head started bleeding, you know, your head's already better than I already, right? But I had much blood dripping down his face, and I told the kids, I said, look, if this hurt, hurt, hurt your head too much to do this, like if, if it's too painful for us, this probably is not the best for you. Because as you get to high level, this is what's going to happen. In college, I remember coming home, I had scabs. Well, that's when we first did this the first of the year in time, I had scabs all the time in my head. That couldn't be a So you do this real dog all the time, over and over and over. But then it kind of hardens up and then you're good to go for the rest of the season because it's kind of hard enough just like a lift and you're going to get So having a head drill, these circles I'm facing, I circle he faced them, same half he lowers his level, I lower my level, my head's always in place, my wall's always in place. So my first line defense is my hand, my second line defense is my head. And here's where it comes in from whole like loose arms, you know, loose neck, right? Derek goes to shoot on me right here as he goes to attack. I'm going to drop both my arms down. He goes to attack. Right here. I'm sticking both my arms down. Specifically, it would be great to get both of them, but sometimes you can only get one. But putting my arms down, that's my third line of defense. Hands, head, and arms. And my arms are like a line of defense. I kind of think of them like, uh, uh, I, I heard Eric Aiken say this for the first time, but like fence posts. Those are my arms. I like that. Alright, why do we have fence posts? Keep people out of the way. Protect. No trespassing. This is my fence, right? Don't come here. No trespassing. Keep people out. And fence posts, or they shape like they're straight. Fence posts are shaped like this, right? Fence posts are shaped like this. And so guys attack, I turn my arm and I give him my elbow. I give him those fence posts. To stop the shot. Why do you think why do you think I, I give him my elbow? Anybody know? Well, why would I do? I mean, why would I do? Why would I do this? Because yeah, you can shoot them arm. Depends. Number one and number two, guys. The hardest part of my arm is not my bicep. You see, it's bicep. You know, I let this guy punch me in the face all day. It's bicep, it's no big deal. But I'm not going to do that like this. <laughs> I have to go to the trainer. Plus, the hardest part of my arm is not my bicep. I'm out of here. So it bends, that's why number one, I don't want it to bend, I want the fence post, fence post don't bend. And then number two, I want to give him an arch spark off so he goes to attack. Go ahead. I'm going to shoot out my elbow and knock yourself out. Literally, right? So hands, head, and arms. So then what happens from there? When I start blocking loose arm, neck, loose arm, he goes to shoot, and I'm down blocking right here. A lot of times, where do you end up? Probably spend time doing that this morning. I have not going to spend time teaching quite a lot, so I'm going to bless it, correct? So, you did that this morning. That's how you get in there a lot. 
See that? And then when he gets a new, he gets a counter attack. He's still about to have him down. <clears throat> Scored a lot of points. Um, trained in the Olympics in college, doing this. I think Kevin Jackson is probably the best American example we've ever had. Somebody scored 20 here. Brown, you shot him again. Psh, he's already done. I mean, he's the top of us over there. You know, Brown, you kind of shot him again. He's already here. I mean, he's set up done maybe anyway. Some guys, maybe not as explosive. You want to catch the front head off, you want to control a little bit, and run down, not shameful. But ideally, you want to cut the angle as fast as possible. You know what's really cool about cutting the angle for go slow? What does this remind you of? on me, stuffs him, trailing up, pin. Here's my double, right? So that means it's not standing straight up. Instead of finishing here, now I can finish by going on his chin, butt drag, or I can really drop my hand down if I want, but I can finish here. So guys, it's pin tricks, except same trail like a pin. Drive across, trail like a pin, drive across. Same footwork. Doesn't change. Hands head, arms. Third line defense guys, and the fourth line defense guys are our hips. But this guy totally fakes me out. He's here. Right? Specifically, let's talk about high cross first. Use my hips to line defense here. Really focus on this. It's going to be a little bit more complicated than the last few things I've said. Is what I like to do is a lot of times when this guy's in a good position to see him, it's, it's hard to get his head down. If he's here already, that yeah, just I can stop. But if he's in a good position, I can please be right here. Starting his head down, so from here, what I'm going to do, I won't do this with my buddy in practice, but I will do it in a match. I'm going to take my hands right here and I'm going to elbow him out of the back of the head. And match hard, right? So I'm going to elbow him here. It's not like I'm going, it's not like I'm doing that. But I'm just getting him with a shot. I'm getting that shot, I push his head down, see that? Now I can start stuffing his head. Now at the same time I'm doing this, man, this is all going to happen at the same time. He has my leg. I don't want him to have my leg. So I'm going I'm to kick the leg he has out as high as I can. I'm going to donkey kick to the ceiling. I'm going to kick. And see how it extends his arms up there? So I'm going to donkey kick this to the ceiling. That one on the neck. Donkey kick this to the ceiling at the same time. Third thing is, I'm going to explode this outside hip to his hip bone we have. I'm going to insert that onto his back. So elbow stuff. Donkey kick. And guys, I'll leave this up in the air. I'm not putting this down yet as I turn. Just like that. Give him that hip long here. Right there, he's going to land. He's going to keep scrapping. I can catch the ball right here. Now back to my position I was in before. Team, running down. So the pieces of hip defense are head down, donkey kick, look at my position. Really head up back here. Turn this hip in. Right now, pressure, 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 the land is about to drag, and I'm just strangled. It's not finished. What you can do if you want to add a little bit more physical aggression to it, if you want, you can go one, head down, two, donkey kick, three, hips in, number four, you can take this forearm, I'm not going to do it as far as I can on Derek, but you take this forearm, just go. Time for a Yeah, so that's it. Those four things can go together. Stuff that says, don't be kick, hit bones to his back, forearm shit. I'm going to call it that. You know, a little bit. But I can finish. Single leg. Any questions on hip defense there? Thing you want to add, take away? Your knees are bent. I'm going to do okay. My knees are bent. Kind of like that. Uh, you see people scout out before, kind of scout that position. Here. That's how I'm doing my leg. Really kicking. Kicking it out. Now I'm getting this weight on. Get the, that's, that's tough for me to finish last season. Put my body position. Change everything. When I kick me, my hip, hip, my hip, my hip, my arm, it's going to be hard. Um, Use my tips. Any questions on high seat hip defense? Single leg hip defense. He gets on the inside single. Here. Now clearly, he's trying to 
The better position he has right here, the harder it is to step his head down, right? But if he's in that <coughs> position, stupid. Okay, really? Step his head. So I got it. I got to step the head down. Now again, head up, back straight, hips in. I'm exploding this one. Now I'm starting getting that skydive position again. Here, hips in big time. Now, whatever leg he has in mind, I'm going to tap his waist with my same side arm. So I'm not going to talk about right and left right now, because I'm going to confuse you. He has this leg. See this? I'm going to use the same side arm. I'm going to use the same side arm right here. I'm going to go deep underneath his waist. Because this guy's really tough. He won't let go. So I'm going to come deep underneath his waist right here, and I'm going to start pulling it as hard as I can, locking my weight over the other side. Now I'll go butt drag. I've got a one free hand now. Butt drag. You remember how we turned our hip into him on the high crotch? Remember that? Now watch. Turn the hip into him again. I can catch an ankle right here. Go butt drag. And then I come drop this hand and drive across. Same thing the other side. Let's not talk around some left. He's got this leg. I use the same side arm. Tight. Pull. I'm really rinsing his ribs. I'm getting my weight over to the other side. I grab his butt drag. This outside hip goes. Now, this guy's got real long arms around. I won't let go. Watch how I circle my feet real tight. Again, not big steps, little baby steps. With that pressure in. A lot of pressure the whole time. That's single leg. That can be fancy. Any questions on high seizure singles? How to do that? Last thing is, last thing we're going to cover, and we're going to kind of open it up into the hot spots of questions if you want, is tricks. Hands, head, arms, hips, tricks. We were talking about tricks earlier. Guys, I still address tricks. But it's the fifth line of defense. Fifth. It's not, hey, it's, it's work on some tricks. That's not how we start. Depending on how we But it's good to know some tricks. One of my favorite tricks, especially in folk style, you can still do it in freestyle. Is if a guy gets on a high seat, he gets me dead to right, so he's cutting the corner. I feel like I'm about to go down here. I mean, he's in a pretty good position right now, right? But I feel like I'm about to go down. I just reach back and get whatever I can. Grab whatever I can. Do. I grab, get a handle, whatever I can get. And as I feel like I'm going down right here, all I do is I come back inside. I'm going to tuck. I'm going to grab butt drag. Remember how we were grabbing butt drag off today? I'm going to grab butt drag. I'm going to use this handle. Like that. If I had a good handle upon my hips and freestyle, they'd still score me there. And folks are clear, it doesn't matter where we roll. I just got him off me. I used to do this to my buddy Pablo all the time when he shot high seats. Make it really frustrating. Here. A big part that sets that up. Look at this. Double A. Crying lock. See that? High crotch. Okay. Trail leg. Because your trail leg is what creates that power. Squat position, right? Big step. There's my power. But if I don't bring it up or straight, I don't have much power. I use that for doubles, high seats, for a headlock finish. It's trick. I take a big step, load up my trailer, load, explode. No you got to pass on that. You got my handle, big trail leg step. There. Did I see that trick? Trick! That's not what I'm going to go out there looking for the first 10 seconds in there. It's only if he gets past all that while I go in there. Another trick. Guy gets on a single leg right here, stands up with it. Now he stands up with it. What I want to do here is I want to use my hands and I'm going to punch him backwards. Boom. Create space. I create this space. Now, for space, I'm going to point my knee to the ground like this. Knee down. I'm going to point my toes straight. I'm going to kick out. This is real incredible today in freestyle. If you're watching that, it happens all the time. Guys, we have single legs like this. And like, all right. This guy goes, ah! He's really bad. This happens real fast and real quick. It happens all the time. I'm telling you. But you gotta have the feel for it. You think this is gonna work if I'm real tight, go by it? Shoot on me. Gotta be loose. Gotta 
is a better stance than a square stance. So as you make those changes, arms drop, loose, right? Knees lower a little bit more, so I can take my legs a little better, my arms are firm on my legs, all right? And then the next thing I do here is I have loose neck and loose arms as I stagger my feet. You'll see this? One thing that I was having in mind, one of our new developmental wrestlers, Pat Downey, who just came in a couple days ago, I see he's wrestling this morning, and this, he was getting his stance like this all the time. So first thing, again, he's 18 year old, I have him remind him, he's 19. I have him remind him to drop your arms. This doesn't protect your legs. I'm wrestling Derek right here. This is, this is easy to get some But if I drop my arms, I drop my head, I lower my legs here, now he goes to get to my leg. It's a lot more difficult. And you may, you may say, duh, or anything. Well, duh. But even our senior level guys struggle with that. Even our guys are high level struggle with that. So guys, six year old struggles with it, and 26 year old struggle. So it may, it may seem something real simple, but I think it's ultra important to increase our chance of winning wrestling matches, your team's chance of winning wrestling matches. Is that constant reminder of having guys always come back to the center, they shake hands. The first thing they do is they drop their arms loose. They lower their butt a little bit. Right? Stay static. I'm right here. Now, here's the deal. I always do it with my arms all the time. Because I know if I can shake my arms out like this, they're loose. I'm relaxed. If I'm trying to do this, I'm like, I know I'm tired. So I'm gonna always shake my arms out. If Derek were to get my arm, I knock it to the side any period of time, hit it that way. He should be able to move it that way. It should be that loose. And the thing is, when your arms are loose, you're fast. You're quicker. When my arms are real tight right here, when my arms are tight, like, come on, let's rest. My arms are tight. When he goes to shoot on me, he's going to shoot. I have, I have to relax my arms before I can even defend. And by that time, that's when guys get into your legs. So the truth is, some wrestlers are actually quicker than they really, than they really are. But the reason they don't seem to be that quick and they don't believe they're that quick is because they're real tight. So a lot of you probably know this already, but one of the, one of the first things I have to do when these 18 year olds show up in here is teach them how to relax. I just teach them how to chill out a little bit. Yes, sir. Just something comes to someone that I was growing up and they had short in the neck. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe in your stance you need to shorten your neck because I'll, maybe you said why? I would say when I shorten my neck, I'm having a flex. And so when I'm having a flex, Tight. Tight. Slow. Like, the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. Yeah, yeah I, just, I think so. I mean, I, I think when I'm clearing a front headlock, right here, I need to shorten my neck. I need to shorten my neck when I'm doing that. When I'm wrestling, I don't need to shorten my neck. Because right now, I'm having to actually do like that. You know, pull my, my shoulders up to my neck just to shorten. I'm having to flex. And having to flex, that means I'm tight. I need to relax. Guys, when my neck is relaxed, and my arms are relaxed, my hips are relaxed, I'm fast, so much faster. Because then when Derek, I'm so much faster, he goes to the tanning area, he goes ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, I'm, I'm able to move. I'm able to lower my level. I'm able to down. I'm able to get ahead of that. But if I'm real tight, tight shoulders, tight hands, he goes to the tanning area. That's why guys sometimes have horrible defense. Because they're so tight. What are you going to do to defend a snap down? What am I going to defend a snap down from there? If a guy snaps me straight, I attack at the same time. So if I'm loose right here, if he wants to snap me straight, I mean, that's how I defend a snap down right there. Because I attack. <laughs> if he's really heavy on my head right here, pulling on it, Yes, I can attack, or as he pulls on it, right here, all I'm going to do is relax my neck, go with it a little bit, just circle my feet. Now we pass. Instead of raising this machine, I'm just going to go on my level, double pass, circle my feet. Instead of, instead of what a lot of guys do, you pull on the head, like, ah, ah. that's when guys attack the leg. So when I have to finish snapping, he's snapping me straight, I'll try to time and attack. That's what we do, it's called a stance maintenance drill, where Derek's getting the stance. I'm the guy helping him maintain his stance, I may just be pulling on him. And with his time, there's a period of time I pull on him, which he attacks. Um, 
I want to go into how we clear ties later, towards the end. But back to the stance part, the overarching truth there, loose neck, loose arms, drop your arms, lower your butt a bit more. The more loose you are, the quicker you are. If you want to watch the World Championships, watch some of the guys. We're talking about Kudakov, 60 kilo, two time, three time, defending world champion. Well, 2009, 2010, 2011, so you can make an argument, it's pretty good. Three time defending world champion, watch him wrestle. He'll start out, you see you do this, you just lose. You just, you just lose. You just lose. He's not. That's not how you wrestle. He's loose. And because he's so loose, he's quick, he's really explosive. And you are super on him, he's really quick to be able to move his feet as hard as his legs. So I just want to make that point about stance. Because I think it's a, it's a great point to make. And clearly, if our wrestlers don't have a great stance, nothing else works very well. Your offense and defense have a great stance. What we do to start practice almost every day, I did it yesterday with the guys, the guys that were here, as we'll take turns, I'll remind the guys to start loose, warming up, he gets in a good stance. I'm a good stance, we touch heads first, maybe. And maybe we do a little low finger fighting, All right? Then we just take turns, he shoots on me. And I level change, get my head in the way. I shoot on him, he level change, circles, gets his head in the way. Shoots on me, I level change, get my head in the way. And we just take turns. And that programs the guys muscle memory that anytime a guy lowers his level to attack, I lower my level to get my head in the I lower my level to get my head in the head block. We're going to talk about defense later. But before we get there, I just want to make sure I make that really clear about that stance. Any questions on that, on the stance, before we move on? Being loose, making contact? Any questions at all? Okay, good. So, now, 3 by 5 system is three sets of five things. Five, five, and five, right? Three sets of five. The first set of five things I told you guys last night, I'm clearly going to repeat it today, but the first set of five, or just what I call the five keys to wrestling. And these things I'm going to share with you today over the next you know, 45 minutes to an hour are what I consider the concrete, the foundation that I'm pouring for my wrestling house, right? for my palestra that I'm building for myself. All right? Th these things are the concrete that whether you want to be shoot low singles, duck hunters, double legs, high crotches, dig under hooks, whatever you want to do, these are the things I think are most important that you can always come back to. These are things you can take a, a group of six, seven, eight, nineteen year olds, pour this foundation for them, and build them up for the rest of their lives. And when if they show up to me here when they're 19, 20, 21 years old, if they came into the room and said, Coach, I know it's important for me to my head up, my back straight, my hips in, off my knees, and press her. Like, awesome. Who taught you that? But my, my youth coach did back home when I was seven. I'm like, really? Man, he had a great coach. All right? That's what it would be. So this is really simple, but I want to spend about 10, 20 seconds, maybe a little longer on each one, explaining. All right, guys, the first key to wrestling, people always say, they'll say, Brandon, what do you think the most important part of wrestling? I said, having your head up. And again, you can be like, duh, well, watch some more senior little guys shoot. They still shoot their head at. Duh, they do. A lot of little kids in high school feel young and included. But the reason guys want our head up when we're attacking, number one, the most important thing is so we can see what we're doing. I, I use an example of the little kids which makes sense to the high school kids too. So say, you know, what happens if I'm driving and I look down the floor for 30 seconds? Coach is like, you're going to crash. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to crash. Same thing with us. But I'm sitting here look down at the mat, take shots looking down at the mat. I'm not looking at the road in front of me, the path in front of me that I want to go now. If I'm not looking at that path, then I'm going to crash. It's not going to work out very well. So guys, you want your head up number one so you can see where you're going. That's one of the most important reasons. Because as we know where our head goes, our body goes, correct? But I talk that's our best. So my head up. The second, the second key to wrestling guys is having our back straight. The reason I want my back straight, especially when I'm attacking the shots, is because when I'm back straight, I'm strong. I mean you think about you think about up at the weight room, we go in there, I don't do a lot of pull downs like this. Or K1 rows like this. That would be really goofy if you walk in there so many that. But if you walk to the and saw you cable rolls like this, you'd be like, man, that guy's gonna work better. Right? With some left pull ones like this, you can see that's correct, because my back is straight. When my back is straight, I'm strong. If my back is bent over like this, I'm trying to finish shots like this. My back's bent, I'm weak. And by the way, 
clearly they're connected. When my back starts bending over, my head starts going back. The straight in my back here, you see, my head starts going up. So they're clearly very connected. So number one set up, number two is back straight. The third key to us and guys is have our dips in. The way I define our dips, another word for it is our trunk. There's a term to use nowadays about the street conditioning, you know, this is your trunk. Clearly the strongest part of the tree is the trunk, not the limbs. I define trunk, hips, by right here above my knees, and right here below my pecs. This area, this is my trunk. Also known as your core. Alright, my hips, my trunk, my core. This is the strongest part of my body. If you would ask most uh, 18 year olds what the strongest part of their body is, they may say they're their bench or their biceps or something goofy. Just don't say that. But clearly, your biceps are the strongest part of your body. It's this area right here. So, what that means is that if this is the strongest part of your body, it makes no sense to have it out. If I take a shot on Derek, and I touch, makes no sense. This is the strongest part of my body. If I'm trying to finish this shot to a double leg like this. Head down, back bend, hip side, which you'll see this a lot. I'm not even using the most strong power part of my body. You guys that are involved with high school wrestlers, you've probably done hand cleans, power cleans, those type of things, running boys from here, head down, back bend, hips out to head up, back straight, right? Hips in. So you're pretty much going from hand clean, going from bad position, to lesson to good position. And that's what we're doing, that's what we're learning how to get those hips, learn how to explore, learn how to use the core and trunk. Just score points, and that's not just to be great power runners. We want to be able to make sure that transitions into, if I'm going to go hand clean, right here, head up, back straight, hips in. I want that to make sure it transfers into an onion slam. Right? Make sure that transfers, and think about doing a hand clean right now. Make sure that transfers into here. Right? We want that to connect. Doesn't make sense to have our guys doing hand cleans in there, they don't understand why they're doing them. They're doing them so that connects to a wrestling specific exercise. Alright? So we've got to have the hips in. Head up, back straight, hips in. Fourth key to wrestling, I'm speeding through these because you guys are smart enough to get them. Fourth key to wrestling is staying off my knees. I get to this double leg, I can't just expect to. Knock you guys down on my knees. Some of you may be like, hey, seen that before back home. Me too. Guys, we're on our knees. We're not very fast. We're not very explosive. Clearly, it's a goofy example, but we don't do squats on our knees. We really build up our strength. We don't do that. We don't wear wrestling shoes on our knees, right? For grip. All that stuff, we wear shoes, wrestling shoes on our feet for grip so we can drop off of them. We do squats to strengthen our legs on our feet here. So I don't want to stay on my knees. I may hit my knee for a moment, but I don't come up to my feet as much as possible. Specifically freestyle. Really freestyle. Why, is it, why would you say it's even more important to come to our feet in freestyle? Drive them off the mat. Drive them off the mat. Drive them off the mat. Push them off the mat. That's the great thing about freestyle. I'm wrestling Derek. I don't have to, I don't have to finish the single leg right here. I don't have to finish it. Point. I ain't got to finish it. But that's real hard to do if I go. It's real hard to do on my knees. Go tough. Tough to get that point. But if I drop up, alright, to my feet, then it's a higher chance to run that point. So head up, back straight, hips in, off your knees. You got the fifth key to wrestling, I consider pressure. And pressure means when I hit a double leg, I'm not going to go when I hit a double leg, I don't just go. How many points I score for that? Right? Zero. So pressure means when I hit a guy, boom, try to leg up, hit it. Pressure, 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 pressure. So I get my point. And that's very important for yourself too. Real important. You know, example I use a lot for the kids. I know a lot of you guys work with young wrestlers. The example I use a lot for pressure is a lot of them you know, love football and maybe have played it. Is that we've done that cross the bow tackle drill. I don't know where Derek's going right here. I don't know where he's happening. Exactly. If I just go like that, in a football game, 
My high school football coach has finally done that when he walked up to me, slapped me upside the head, slapped my shoulder pads, dropped by the F bomb 50 times, at me and told me we're going to take a tackle at it. But, you know, guys in here, and I go, here, right? Then my coach would came up, still hit me upside the head and shoulder pads, but he said, oh, that was awesome. Soon <laughs> <laughs> it hit me, but it would have been praising me, he said, cursing me. So the key to that was to keep my feet moving, right? Pressure. So pressure comes from your feet. Here's the best way to remember this. Is just stand straight up. First key to wrestling is head up. Second key to wrestling is back straight. Third key to wrestling is hips in. Fourth key to wrestling is staying off your knees. Fifth key to wrestling is pressure. Y'all see that? Just head to toe. That's, that's great wrestling right there. And look at this. Right now, you're probably thinking all offense. Derek shoots on me. Okay, so. Okay. Second round is 12. Where's my head at? Where's my back at? Where's my hips at? Where's my knees at? See? So you guys working on my front headlights this morning. Did less, had his head down, back, man, hips out, on his knees. Right? He had good. That up actually gets it. Here's the, here's the great thing. How would you um, go ahead and raise your hand on this? Because I don't know see what you guys think. This is work gets thrown out all the time in wrestling. So I'm, I'm going to throw it out at you, and I want somebody to raise your hand and tell me how you would define it. The word is position. Yeah. Head up, back straight. <laughs> we said it a little different. Elbows in, hips in, drive right across. Correct. And here's the thing, guys, you don't have to use the same words as me. I use it that way, you can use whatever words you want, as long as you're consistent with your young wrestler. You don't have to use the same words as me. But I think as long as they understand hips in, as long as they understand head up, those important things, he's right on. The way I define position are those things. That's great position. <clears throat> this is good position. This is bad position. See? Good position, bad position. So when I have to find position, it's all sitting around those side. Head up, back straight, hips and off your knees, pressure. That's position. And then we get thrown around all the time. I, hey, if you'd gotten better position, you'd have finished that. But if, you know what I found? If there was a group of 15, 16 year olds right here, and I asked them that same question, in general, there might have been really you know, the kid that's coached really well, they're like, oh, no, maybe he does. But I've done humbly, I've done hundreds and hundreds of plenty across the country. When I ask wrestlers in prime position, it's a ghost. They don't know. But I'll say, how many times your coach said that? But he says it all the time. But you know what it means? So guys, I'll make a point there. Make sure when you say position, you get in good position, you're in bad position, make sure that your wrestler knows what that is. Does that make sense? Make sure they understand. Because position can seem like a fancy word, but as long as you define it, connect it to the truth, uh, position is having your body in the right place for the sport of wrestling. Right? Having your body in the correct place. That's great position. Having your body in the wrong place, that position. Do you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, well, how do you incorporate, you also incorporate the sense of mad awareness in there? Which to me is kind of, it's kind of more of a philosophical piece, but it, it coordinates it's not only that you're dealing with the body, but where you are in terms of the, For the sure. wrestling space. For sure. And I would say, you know, freestyle, because you don't have to be legalistic about it, but, you know, if I'm wrestling Derek and he's right here, he's not in a good position for his stuff, right? He's not in a good position on the mat. His body's not in the right place. Because all it takes is just a good level change. That's a point. So based on where he's at on the mat awareness, he would be in bad position. But, but I will say, though, as you know this, of working with 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds, you can't make position about 42 different things because then they don't get it. It's too much almost. So that's why I'm really passionate about making sure they understand clearly. Well, but you're exactly right. If you be on the head man, is that in a bad position for sure? Those type of things, uh, standing straight up, even on the heads up, back straight, hips in, I'm off my knees, this is bad position. <laughs> so that's not, I'm not good place with my body based on the stance I said earlier. So that can continue to be a bigger thing for sure. But they need to make sure they understand that head up back straight gets in all the pressure. 
Any questions about those? Flat things? And those things? I'll just, by the way, get down. All I do is freestyle wrestling guys, but some of you guys play their uh, coach collegiate wrestling. Also those folks that also know class and also know his amateur, right? <laughs> okay, so when I ride a guy right here, when I go break him down, right here and I'm riding him, I'm trying to break him down right here, look where my head's at. Up, back straight, hips in, up, my knees. Grab his arm, grab his See? I'm not head down, I have to hips out. So, right, from up from the bottom. Bottom man set, top man set. I swung back in him, he pushes on me, head up, back straight, hips in, up my knees. Pressure. So, I just talk freestyle. I'm talking neutral. I'm talking defense. We got shoots on me. Riding guys on top. Get out from the bottom. He comes to most holes that jet. So what drills do you use to enforce that? <coughs> the drills. Probably the best drill that we do to reinforce that is that's called the lead pound drill, which is probably one of the most rigorous drills to do. Most kids don't like it. <laughs> But that's how most of the great drills are, right? When I get here, he goes to stall zone. I've got to finish from here. I head down, back in, hips out. So I work on reinforcing this. I explode. So I keep breathing into the key pit and speed. Right? Just get you to go from bad position to good position. We do these drills in here every Thursday morning. We do wrestling specific lifts. I start out having guys shoot in on single legs. He gives me 40% resistance, and I drive him up out of bounds. The next one I make him give me 70% resistance, so this is a freestyle drill. As I'm dropping out, he makes me more weight, and he cuts me off in the corner and makes it harder for me. And the last one we do is I put guys all the way down here to the small, get all the way down. And I make them from here. Go all the way from that position, right? To good position. So good. Anything else? Also, repeating a thousand times. Always helps. Circling, got ties up right here, he's like, boom, circle, back inside. 
left hard tap, half tap, and top tap. See, the feet are used to serve. Because most of us are going through the stat and by not moving the feet at all. But if they just circle, easy. But it's not really easy. So those are things we do, and we'll talk about later. Cornell asked the discount of uh, gymnastics. Things that are really basically cartwheels, front rolls, down front rolls, back rolls, extending, um, front hand swings, guys that can do round off back flips, all that stuff. Awesome. Um, not all guys can do that, but if you can, it's a great time to do it. Keep your time to do that type of stuff. So those are great things to do to warm up. Um, to warm up too, a lot of times we'll have the guy run. I sprint that way, sprint. I just hold him back. But it gets them going, so they're probably up. So there's a lot of stuff like that. Anything else about the three about, about the uh, five keys wrestling? Now here's the next thing that's probably the most controversial. Uh, we talked about it once today. That I show, and before I teach it, I'm gonna make sure I make this clear, guys. This is just how I. Teach it. It's actually how Steve Neal penetrated, who's a world champion heavyweight. It's how Joe Williams penetrates. It's how Cooper Club, I was just talking about penetrates, I can keep going. It's how a lot of guys that have become the best in the world penetrate, but, but there's clearly other guys that don't do it this way. So just know that. I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is the way I do it. So, this next set of five things is the penetration steps. The way I penetrate right here, I'm going to show you what I did growing up in Amarillo, Texas, the local Monsey Boys Club. I'll show you what I did. They said step, heel, and they said, go on your toe. And they said, touch your knee. And they said, bring your leg up. And they said, keep driving. That's what I learned. I was six. You know, God bless my coaches. <clears throat> but I tried that as I get older. And this um, guy, Joe Williams, he doesn't really work very well. I tried to shoot on him, didn't work. I had to learn how to evolve. I finished training steps to become quicker, more explosive. The problem with this thing right here for me, again, for me, the problem with it is when I step right here, right now, the only place for my body to go is down. I'm not going to step and go and do else home response for I'm not going to do that. All right? When I step here, I step now, the only place for my body to go is down. Now, at this moment, if a guy has a good sprawl and he sprawls real hard, this is a lot of guys get stuck right there. Um, what I call landing the plane. They land the plane. And I feel like I, it was really hard for me to score when I landed the plane. So the opposite of that is I figured out that I need to have a way to take off. You know, and I always tell the little kids, I don't want to land the plane. I don't want to come, I don't want to come back on the front of the trip, right? I want to go on the trip. I want to take off. And like, yeah. Right? So I'm going to take off. I'm going to shoot up to my home. So you say, okay, great. Randy, what does that look like? So, try to raise your hand and what's the very first thing you do besides the setup? What's the very first thing you do before you penetrate? Change the work. Huh? Well change. Well change. Now, side step, and that's not bad. I'll say what I do sometimes. I'll take maybe at the little back step. If you see Kel do a lot, he'll do this a lot. He'll do that a lot, and he's faking on guys. Um, I do that a lot when I'm faking. So it's not necessarily a side step, it's more like a little back step, you know? I call it over slow, over slow, over slow. Alright? But before I do that though, two levels. So it looks like this. You go a little slow. Okay? See that shot's open, watch. Little back step, little back step. Here. Now I want to get habit of trying to touch my hands in that. Because so I know I'm going to get a little close to the mat and good luck. Now I'm ready to take off. See that? So, first thing I always do for our penetrates, I love this one. Tell me why it's important. Man, why is it important to level change before you shoot? Somebody tell me, why is it important to level change before you shoot? Get you closer. Get you closer. Get you closer. For sure. Yeah. Increase the opening. Well, you're right, but that's not what I'm looking for yet. You're going to shoot shot now. So, I shoot up, which keeps what? In place. Yeah. 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 Right? Look at this. What if I don't level change? 
Put it on my ad. Level change is for whistles. Right? I don't want level change at all. So I want that leg. The only way I can get it, guys, I want level change to go. See that? So a level change, you have to get closer. A level change is staying in good position. A level change here so I can, so I can keep my head and my back shoulder and hips in. That's all a level change. Is so when I don't level change, I have to do this. So the first thing I always do is a level change so I can change my the first five keys of wrestling. I'm going to keep that concrete in place. Got a strap in? That's all a level change. Another reason I level change is because I want to create some coil, some power in my legs. I don't want to say coil, I'm talking about like a rattlesnake, right? If the snake is straight, it's not really going to strike very far. Don't, be, don't fear to get into 10 feet away from straight. Right? But if that thing does like this, then be scared. Same thing with our legs. The reason I love the chain is I want to pull it. See my legs? Pull it. Now I have power. So that's the number one. First thing you do in penetration is that level change. Two, maintain position and create power. Any questions on that so far? But the next thing is, the next part of this is going to be what I just call a knee pound. You can call it whatever you want. I call it a knee pound because what ends up happening is when I explode right here, my knee ends up pounding the mat. It works well for me because I know it's a step. My knee was going to step anyways. So I'm going to go about 10%. I'm going to go real slow this first time. All right? Level change. Watch my knee pounds. That allows me to take off right there. That allows me to create some power. That uses the coil on my legs and the power I created to make a difference when I hit it. Now here's the deal. I don't know where my knee's gonna land. It's going in somewhere deep in there. It's okay. I don't have to measure it out. But here's what's really, really important about this is that I have to make sure my shoulder hits before my knee hits there. Let me show If my knee hits, all this power is created. That's what a lot of kids do. They fall over, and then they want to try to jump up itself. You didn't take advantage of the power. So when I explode from this knee pound, the second piece of it, I want to make sure my shoulder hits. I'm going to go easy. I want to make sure my shoulder hits. See that? Before my knee hits. That's why I know I'm using this power. I'm using this coil fully. And I'm shooting up at a 45 degree angle, like the plane taking off. Okay, for those of you who work with 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? You know what? Then I'm going to learn 45 degree angles at a freshman high school. And then I can get it back. But six year olds, they know what playing it looks like to stay off. So I level change, and I shoot up to that angle at 45. Well, I show it that's it for me. Any questions on that so far? That's usually something that um, causes some friction. It's clearly, like I said, different points of view. I want to take big steps and come back up. Again, it just, it just didn't work on most of people. I couldn't get to go when he was like, you know, I had to adapt, I had to change. So this is what this looks like. Lower your level knee count. Now it's not going to I'm going to go up 40%. 40%. So this is what this looks like. I do a drill called the explosion drill, which I think for your high schoolers and little kids, this is how you get this. The explosion drill, I'll tell you when I'm going to go. So right the explosion drill is I'm going to make sure I walk up and close enough to my opponent, but I'm going to be close enough. If I can't touch him, I always tell my wrestler, don't shoot. If, if, I, I can't, if I can't come near, close to touching him, for the most part, I'm too far out of the gym. But if I'm wrestling here and I can touch him, that's why I don't wrestle a lot, I always do this. I'm wrestling, I go. Number one, it makes him mad because he wants to reach for me, which I want to reach for him too. Right? So if I were to punch him, I knew I was close enough. I knew I was close enough. If I can punch him, I'm close enough. So part of the drill is, I know I can touch him, I'm close enough. That's the first thing. Then what I do from there, once I'm close enough, all I'm going to do is I'm going to level change, hands to the mat, okay, ready? Level change, then I'm going to work on my, my kids just exploding up into Level change, see? Now here's the deal. I think you would agree that I have a better chance to get a double leg if I hit a guy like that than if I just do this. That's what I found in my wrestling career. There'd be people over here that say, Brandon, not everybody can do that. And I'd be like, okay, fine, I understand. I can't, you know, I can't, uh, I can't 
can't shoot you both singles like John Smith. I mean, my ankle picks hard as dangerous as Kelly's. Because his arm is big as well. Okay? There's different styles of different things that people do, but for me teaching you this today, this is just a different way to think about it. Okay? okay? But all the change you need now. Shooting up at a 45 degree angle, putting that shoulder in his abdomen. The way it's to fine tune this for wrestlers is if you're a right leg lead, you want your right shoulder to like an arrow, and here's the bullseye. So when I go, when I go, I put an arrow in the bullseye. If you're a left leg lead, your left shoulder, I put an arrow in the bullseye. See that? That kind of keeps them on that trajectory on that path. So level change and kneecap. Any questions at all? Yes, sir. How do you do that by yourself? How do you do that by yourself? How do I do it by myself? How do you do that by yourself? Well, I don't think you can do it by yourself, but it's a great thing just to have to get a partner in front of them. I mean, I could, I have guys like, uh, here, I need you. <coughs> this is what I did. So, like, okay, you stay in here. Your turn. Get your seats. Okay, can you touch them? Can you get close enough? Okay, to get them close enough, lower your level. Okay, from right here, now watch, here's what I do. This is a balance in a little bit. Get your legs and hips loose. Balance. Balance. Your legs loose, feel that? Count three. You jump the arrow and the bullseye. Ready? One, two, three. Boom! All right? And you lift them up. When you lift them up, you help them understand that, that angle of things. You help them understand that trajectory. Because when they go do it on their own, they'll go. They what? So you start lifting them up so they feel that. And then when you do that with, with the kids, this guy knocks them off the speed and lands on his back. Like, oh. And it's like, okay, your turn. I know they're not your breath out. Come here. Your turn. And you let him do it to his buddy. Then it's kind of like, man, I'm a lot more powerful than I thought. It's not because you got stronger in the last 30 seconds. It's because you changed your technique. You start shooting up instead of shooting down. So I do it with partners first and I understand it. And then after they kind of get that down, I mean, you can do it on your own. When you're just kind of doing stance and motion, you're telling you, Footwork down, you can do it on your And then, by the way, with my guys, because you start getting guys that are real powerful, and it's not really, you know, fun to do. So much, I know you guys all, all have these, it's okay. You have one of them, or two of them, okay? Because the truth is, Derek doesn't want me to do that to him 20 times in a row, it's not fun. But he doesn't mind this, right? He's not going to walk on the external close up your level chain. Right? And then I can work on that same shot, that explosion. He doesn't mind this. I think that's cool. I'd much rather you hit the dummy than me. So using dummies to work on your uh, explosion is a great option to have. Sir? Uh, maybe into this, but taking it through to a finish. Uh, yeah. Locking your hands, you just, just, I mean, are you blasting them off their feet so it doesn't really matter as much? So we'll get there. We'll get there. Probably forget, ask me again. So now, there's five steps to this, right? We're only done with two. But I say if you don't get these two, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, one easy level chain. Bam! Full explosion there, right? Now, third step, trail leg. Guys, my trail leg, hold my trail leg, because just the trail's behind, right? Okay? It's trailing behind. So I bring my trail leg up. Here's a problem a lot of wrestlers have. When they bring the trail leg up, they bring it up like this. What's the problem with this? Straight leg out. It's straight, I have no power, right? I don't do squats like this. I want to bring it up like this, and I, I overemphasize my teeth. So they know. I put my full foot in the mat. Someone want to do this too. Like, when do squats like that either? Use your whole leg strength right here. Make that 90 degree angle. Like you're in a squat, right? Like I'm doing a squat. Trail leg up there. So number three, trail up, trail leg up. What happens, number three and number four happen at the same time. Kind of like number one and number two kind of happen at the same time. Three and four is trail leg up. Number four is just what I call pivot. Watch how my knee comes up. Watch this how I just pivots about six inches towards my trail leg. At that moment, I'm already taking all that pressure off, all that power to sit off. You guys, the way I think of my, my pivot, also called a swisher, also called a windshield lock. Depends on where you come from. But I just call it pivot, because it's short. Alright, pivot, 
The way I think about this pivot foot, I think about it like an example I use like a rudder on a boat. You tow it, it's on, you know, hey, what does the rudder do? It turns the boat. What happens is the rudder is turned one inch, the boat will go around the surface. Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit of turn, the boat will turn. A big, huge carnival cruise line will turn. If you move it just a little bit, it'll turn. So right here, it doesn't have to be like, uh, then I lose the double, right? Overemphasize the angle, I lose the double. So I'm just going to be my shell leg up. I'm just going to pivot just about six inches right here. Take that thresh off. And notice how my pivot, see how my toes in the mat? See that? I'm not like this because I can't push off the top of my shoe. The top of my shoe doesn't have rubber on it. The bottom does. I don't walk on the tops of my feet. Walk on the bottoms. So try to leg up. Pivot. Try to leg up. Pivot. <clears throat> Your question. What I say to the kids is that this is the game. Remember, this is his trunk. What's the strongest part of the tree? Trunk. Right? So I don't want to chop down the trunk. I want to chop down the limbs. I want to make my hands like axes. Not the trunk, the here. So when I attack this double, boom, my elbows are in. They're not like this. They're in tight, so I don't get underhooked by so shooting like this. Right? My hands are in tight, close to his knees, and then I'm like axes. Right here on the back of his kneecaps, and watch out. Bring elbows in. Tight. Axes, elbows in. So trail leg up, pivot. Axes, elbows in. But right now, he's already starting to buckle a little bit. See this? The fine tuning of the pivot, trail leg up, pivot, what I do right here is I call it flex. That's where I overemphasize. Head up back, straight hips in. See that? Because if I don't overemphasize, I'm kind of here. My head can get down, my back can get down, my hips get down. But if I go trail leg up, pivot, flex! So it kind of moves away from me. This is what this looks like. <laughs> Tell those kids, I'll say, it's kind of like when you're downstairs in the room and you have your shirt off and you're standing in the mirror and you flex. Don't act like you've never done it before, you might have. Right? That's basically what we're doing here. Then look, like, close off now. Yeah. Shelly, here. Head up, back, straight, hips in. Over hip size is the first thing we talked about today, right? So, show like a pivot, go together. Show like a pivot. Show like a pivot. Flex. Hands are axes on the knees, on the limbs. Now, from here, guys, this is the easy thing. I want to talk about the finishing. The finishing here is easy. It's just step up. Pressure, 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 pressure. We're talking about. Before you get there, I want to come back to the pivot. Why is the pivot so important? What's an angle? Huh? An angle is getting ahead of Yeah, I'm not going to be mean right here. I'm going to draw this out of you guys. He's just taking his weight, right in, going that way. An angle is taking his weight, putting it that way.
Guys hit shots and they just drive. And again, freestyle is great. But in collegiate, if I drive them out of bounds, how many points do I get? Zero. So I'd say the angle and golf style I like is probably make strong arguments more important. Because I got finished. I got finished. Push them out of the three. Pivot. I was finished. On the back. I got control. So you can make a strong argument that angles are more important than golf style. It's just classic game. Okay? The best example of angle that I've seen outside of the sport of wrestling, always uh, use this on new clinics, are, uh, are bullfighters. The last time I watched a bullfighter, I really focused in on his feet. And what was really interesting is he'd stand kind of like this. And I looked at his feet and I was like, man, that's how I stand. I mean, he's not standing, he's not in the wrestling stance, he's standing up. So he's doing like this. So go real slow. There it's a bull, go real slow. But if he comes, watch my foot. Spread it like that. Take it. The bull comes again, he's like, spread it like that. Did it. Like, that's what I do. I don't finish shots. You know what the matador is creating? He's creating a T angle. And then down the road, the only way this matador is going to be able to beat, 130 pound matador is going to be able to beat a 1200 pound bull, is he keeps doing this. Spear, okay? Feel like a pivot, he catches his body, throws the spear. He comes back over here, and the bull comes right. Feel like a pivot. And 10 spears later, the bull's like, Falls down. How is a little guy like that beautiful? Angles. Real simple. And the guys that end up getting hit, and the guys that get so kind of risky that they'll start doing this, and then we'll get really, really close and maybe they miss the angle and they catch it. Because they, they don't create as good of You guys understand that example? Um, this is a goofy one that I wish took place, but it doesn't. I think about, I was up in uh, Nessus Park, Colorado, not so long ago, and there's some big horn sheep up there. I got to watch them do this. Right? They're raising up. They're both on the letter I mean. I just thought, what if one of those big horn sheep understood angles? Right? This guy raised up, he raised up, and he said, back, trail, let go. Hit it! Ah! Right on the side of the other big horn sheep. He right? would have all the chicks. He'd be like the master big horn sheep. Love him, can't, right? Because he'd never lose. Because he'd be, you know, just T-boning t, t guys to the side because they understand things. But they don't understand angles and they just sit there and do this all. By the way, my presser just kind of tied into that golf start shape here. Alright? Once you start creating angles, it's a different story. You won't be that side if you guys have any questions about the angles, I want to make sure I can hear what that nail down. Cool. Level change. Knee down. Trail it up, mark three. Did it. Okay, the last one's just a piece of cake. Okay, so let's get it. Alright, flipped. Now from here, I'm just going to step up and across. Remember, head up, back straight, hips and up. Off my knees. Pressure, off my knees, pressure. Off my knees, and step up. I'm just stepping up towards his toe. And the fifth key to us is pressure, pressure, pressure. Look at my hands on the back of his kneecaps. Not good, guys, it's not a, I tell the kids, not a double butt sheet. That means like, hey, I'm not here. Pressure, 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 pressure. The reason why I like to grab here too is because you're finishing, especially in collegiate. If I have my hands locked on his knees, it's hard to turn. But if I spread and I land right here, look, I can, I can jump my knees in. Then I can come in and turn. That's why I prefer doing this. First. Some guys aren't big turf, turf guys, that's fine. I'm talking about going up like forearms just below the butt and... Like on a double? Yeah, shoot up. Like on a double right here? Land right in here? here and you flex it. Like maybe right here? Yeah. And then step yeah, up. I think for me, I guess my arms feel like that now they're so short, this would be really hard to come all the way around and grab this. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this is really easy. And by the way, here's his trunk. This doesn't do as much as... When I start messing with his kneecaps, his angle's on his knee, he buckles a lot easier than when I squeeze on his butt. Is that horrible? No, I'm going to say it's horrible. I mean, if I saw somebody in a, in a tournament go, I'd be like, sweet! You know? I mean, that's great, you can do that. <clears throat> but again, personal thing, I feel really confident buckling guys' knees, running down, stepping in, third turn. 
So the last part is to step up and across. Here, run them down. Here's the cool thing about this. Try to move away from me. Show like a pivot. Now, I would never do this in wrestling. Well, let's just say, for example, just for a 